Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Silver Bowl. Mount Carmel area against Shemokin area. The biggest one of the year and the backyard rivalry that's unmatched in the state of Pennsylvania, guys. It's the game. It really is. And we say this every year, and every year it's true. Uh, both communities are geared for an entire week. Actually, for the first part of the season, they're looking at this game. And uh, you're seeing, if, you, if you're watching this happening now, Mount Carmel area is pumped up. They're, they're in the big time. Shemokin area came out a little bit earlier. They were they were riled up too. Uh, I think you're going to see. You're looking at Mount Carmel area, of course, three and zero, and Shemokin area coming in with a one and two slate, uh, having a tough time this year, which is uncharacteristic of them for the past five or seven years. And of course, they've been hit with some some tough injuries, which hasn't helped Wayne. And you probably can can talk about that a little better. You know those guys down there. Well, uh, Bugner is probably you know one of their biggest injuries down there. Uh, main lineman coming off the last season and uh, injured, they used them sparingly last week. And uh, this, uh, you know, tonight he's supposed to uh, start and, and put some time in. Uh, the other one is their halfback. Uh, you know, he got it's, hurt. Wislowski, I guess. Wislowski, yeah, yeah it, uh, got hurt, broke a hand uh, a couple games ago, didn't know what he was going to do, playing with the cast. Yeah, so, he, he was something we saw last year. He came in and, and really lit the field up. And he has right. all kinds of potential, but unfortunately, and, and there's nothing he can do, but with a broken arm, he is severely hampered. He does carry the ball, which makes it extremely right. difficult. So, although you will see him in the game. Now, Bugner, I understood, we had just heard before the game he may not play. Oh, so, okay. I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm only listening down on the, the down sideline there, the people talking back and forth. But there's certainly a team that's having a tough time this year. And, and if you look at it from that perspective, then, yeah, you're going to say it, it's a blowout. But then, <laughs> Never. I wouldn't say that. Not, no, not in this game. Absolutely no, not, not in this game. And and how many times we said this? You know, no matter who has the record or what's going on, uh, you know, you throw them out, and and whoever comes off the field with the most points is the winner in this game. Well, there's too many games over the past years, many many years, that when the underdog has come up and won here, or we've gone down and won there, and you know, you never can tell in this game what's going to happen, Warren. Too emotional, really, is it? And I'll tell you what, you're looking over at that at that side of the field over there. There's quality athletes over there. Yes, I mean, there it's is. not like they lost every single athlete in the town over a period of a year. There's some good ball players over there. They've had some tough breaks. They've played some tough teams early in the year. Uh, Norris Google now looking like like a, a real favorite you know, th th uh, this year. They're playing tough so they, they lose a tough game to them right at the end of the ball game. So this this is going to go either way and I think it's it's going to be whoever gets on the scoreboard first is going to have a little bit of control That's of the right. game. That's right. And, and you know I was just talking to uh, with one of the teachers down at the uh, down at the school this morning, and and said the same thing. You know, no matter who scores first, that's just going to jack everybody up on that team. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's just a, a shot in the arm. Uh, it was it was pretty nice down there today, down at the high school. Uh, they walked around with the band today. They were playing cheers through you know fight songs through the halls, everything uh -huh. else. They had yeah. you know kids out. The cheerleaders were going. They were over the elementary school. And I'm sure up here at Mount Carmel, it was the same way. And it's just, you know, when it gets down, the excitement this week, the excitement this week for the whole week in both communities is just jacked up. And you can tell by the crowd that's here tonight, a big crowd at the Silver Bowl. The rain happened last night, came into this morning thinking that maybe it would hamper the crowd a little bit, but no way. Yeah. It's loaded here. Lots of people here from Mount Carmel area against Shemokin area. Kicking off for the Red Tornadoes, number 41, Joe Costello. And deep for the Indians, number 20 on the left side, Jamie Wislowski, and number two, Paul Yost. This is it, a squibber taken about the 35-yard line. Finds a little running room, which was number nine, Jason Lynch, tackled over there by number 32, Joe Chicatano. So Schmokin area will take over first down and 10 on the 39, and that is the respect that the Mount Carmel staff shows for that those two guys in the backfield of the Indians. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing you're going to see tonight is probably the two premier uh, quarterbacks in this whole area uh, with Stamets, uh, you know, being down there for four years and, and with Higgins at Mount Carmel for four years. Ryan Stamets sets the Indians up on the 39. Indians go into a shift. 44, Harry Reed in the backfield at fullback. Number 15 also in there, Dave Ritchie. And this one's going to be an offsides called against the Red Tornadoes. So a major shift pulled by Sam Shikitano and his staff, and Shimokan Indians come up to the line, first down and five. 
Well, so you see two surprises right off the bat here. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> makes for an interesting game here. Again, the same shift. Stamets, quick handoff to Weslowski, blocked up in there by number 70, Jason Rohrbach. The roadblock. <laughs> Good play by Rohrbach. Second down and five. Things to watch in this game, obviously. First thing you're going to watch and you're going to see through the whole game. Mount Carmel area comes in with a decided size advantage across the line, something they have not enjoyed in the last four or five encounters <laughs> with Shimokan area. This year, the, the nod goes to big red size-wise and probably speed, too. They probably are a little faster overall team speed than you see from the Indians tonight. Stamets hands off to number 20, Wislowski, and he stopped after about a one-yard gain off the right side in there. Number 44 for the Red Tornadoes made the initial hit, Sean Sheptock, and Corey Hepler also on that left side. Now, the, now the thing I, I did uh, talk about down there today was uh, the size of Shemokin, even though they are a little bit smaller and much quicker than they have been over the last few years. Weslowski comes out of the Shemokin lineup at number two, Paul Yost, a sophomore, in for him. Stamets puts Yost in motion. Stamets back to pass. Quick pass on the outside to Richie, it looks like, or Yost came out of the backfield, number two. Good for an Indian's first down on the 45-yard line of the Red Tornadoes. Well, we talked at Supper Club last night, and, and uh, of course, we talked about Wislowski, and again, we're going to tell you that Wislowski is probably one of the premier backs in, in, in the region. That's right. But he's got, a, I guess, a broken hand, it, is, it looks like, or right. a broken finger or something on that, because he he's wearing a cast. He now. is, he, it, and I was thought, it's not a soft cast, it's a hard yeah. cast yet. So if you, you try to imagine being a running back with a cast on your hand, and, and you've got a really feel for this kid because that's that's all heart and courage out there now. Right. Pitch back to Wesloski. Joe Costello with a big tackle for a two-yard loss for the Red Tornado. And, and here's the point, it, the, the whole thing, you know, people don't understand. When he's going through the line or, or running downfield, he wants to switch that ball. He can't switch that ball into a, into his cast hand. Mm. There's no way to grip the ball. Now, it really hampers you as a running back. Now, what I was leading up to, though, that, that Coach Williams thought that Yost, number two, was going to be the equal here, that, that mm -hmm. he wasn't someone you wanted to discount. And they were at, they were as fearful of him as they were of Wislowski coming into the game tonight. They felt he had all the same tools, the same kind of speed and quickness. So it'll be interesting to see what he does during the game tonight. Yost goes in motion again for the Indians. Stamets back to pass. Looking downfield. Good rush put on that time by number 59, Mark Burns. And it goes in and out of the hands of Yost on about the 50-yard line. Now Burns, he turned the heat up again that time. How's that for a pun, huh? How am I doing? <laughs> How is that, huh? Come on. Third down and 12 for the Indians. The ball on the 47-yard line. 9.02 left in the ball game. No score. Burns, left in the first quarter. If you're, a, if you're a quarterback in an opposing team this year with Big Red, one thing you better learn to do fast is be able to pass with Mr. Burns bearing down right. on you because you're just not going to go back there without him coming after you. Stamets coming out of the shot guy. Rush on from the nose guard. Grady hits Yost in and out of his hands on the 15-yard line. And that one Ooh. will be fourth down for the Indians, but that's a play they might come back to. Well, I, you know, I wouldn't blame them. First of all, uh, Stamets had more than enough time back there to watch all his receivers, and he had everybody out on a pattern. He had nice prote protection out there, and, boy, he put that right into Yost's hands. Unfortunately, he dropped it. He also took a vicious hit, though, at the end of the play. Somebody, well, I didn't see who it was, but somebody nailed him as he let the ball go. Senior Brian Weichel back to punt for the Indians. Sets it up. Nice high spiral. Fair catch called for by Gonzalo on the 14-yard line. And the Red Tornadoes will take over first down and 10 deep in their own zone. Well, you, got, you got the feeling out period here again now. Everybody's seeing what everybody's going to do and who's going to line up where and are there any changes and all. You saw that in the first uh, the first, first series, series, and you'll see it again here now as we That's go right. on offense. Uh, unfortunately, now most teams in, uh, this year didn't have much of a feeling out process before we were on the scoreboard. <laughs> so, Shemokin area obviously has to hope for a little better than that th th tonight. Higgins sets the Red Tornadoes. Shep talk up the middle. Gain of about four. Fumble, fumble on fumble. the play. And a ball's recovered by the Indians. And these are the breaks that we talked about earlier tonight. That's Cannot. Right. Go in the direction of Mount Carmel. First down and 10, Indians the ball on the 13-yard line. This, this here is what, what exactly what we talked about. This can turn the game the other way. 
You've got to be careful with the ball down deep. You give them an, an emotional rush like this, and they put some points on the board, it's going to be a hard dog fight all the way through this game. 8.41 left in the first quarter. Indians come back out. Stamets is in the ball game along with Weslowski and Harry Reid, number 44, at fullback. Stamets pitches back to Weslowski. Big Rush makes a nice move, but doesn't get around number 41, Joe Costello, as he drives him back to about the 16-yard line, maybe 17-yard line, yeah. loss of two yards. Cast, man. Well, at this point, would you think that uh, Joe Costello is king on Weslowski? <laughs> what makes you say that? Uh, I don't know. The cast, man. Second down and about 14 yards to go for the Indians early in the first quarter. Stamets fakes the handoff, comes on the end around the Richie. At first tripped up by number 59, Mark Burns. Oh, Burnsy, Finished Burns off over there by Corey Hepler and number 22, Brett V. Oh, the burner made a great play. That's, that's exactly where you want to be. That's perfect. Perfect play. That's all you can say. That was a perfect defensive play right there. Excellent. He, he, he didn't even bother to take the blocker on. What he did is he went right down yeah. to the ground. The blocker went over the yeah. top of him. He made the, he made the initial hit. Yeah, third, third down and 12 for the Indians, and they call timeout to talk it over here where they're down in two, uh, two place uh, situation here. They can, you know, go for two right here. Well, see, what you want to look at here from the Shimokan area viewpoint now is now you got a big break. But if you, if you, now you, you've got a big break, you spent two downs, you lost. Uh, I guess three yards the scoreboard right. shows. So now you, you get yourself backed up again here and don't get anything out of these, these four downs down here. That's going to hurt you. You know, you're going you're gonna to feel a little bit badly about that. You really wanted to capitalize when you're down this close. And they missed, uh, you know, in that first series of downs on that, that pass to Yost, uh, you know, he, that was a 25-yard gainer yeah. right oh, there. Oh, absolutely, yeah. This is the 86th meeting between the Shimokan Indians and the Mount Carmel Red Tornadoes. Mount Carmel has a 53-23-9 advantage in this matchup. 53-23-9. Right, 53 wins, 23 losses, and nine ties. Indians come back up on the line. Stamets goes into that shift. Pitches back. Yost is going to throw the ball and short. That time, a good rush from Mark Burns, Burns over 59. Again, Burns made the entire play. Burns did it all right there. He rushed the play. He uh, he pressured Wislowski. Wislowski then uh, had to rush the, the, the pass a little bit, and uh, the whole play fell apart right from there. But, again, uh, give the burn man credit there. He did it all. I mean, he, if you watch the way he plays the defensive end, he contains to the outside. He, he's never lost in the play. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean he just watches. He just yeah. watches his outside, no matter which side the, the play goes. Stamets in the shotgun formation. Fourth down and 13 for the Indians from the 16-yard line. Snap back to Stamets. Lots of time. Now a rush from Puldenovich. Touchdown, Indians. Nice Reception play. by number. I can't see him getting 81? up there. I can't tell either. It looks like number 81, 81 for the Indians. Which made the reception Brett Hollinghead. Hollinghead. Brett Hollinghead. Is that, that was 81, yeah. Nice pass. Stamets had lots of time and made a great play. Excellent pass. There really was. Excellent pass. A lot of time to, to throw the ball. And uh, he looked like he threw to a, a receiver that was well covered. Right. right. He really threw a laser in there to score a touchdown. Well, you know, I told you, that I told you though, that you're going to see the two premier uh, quarterbacks in this area. It's like they're going to kick for the extra point, number seven. That's Brian Hollings' head. Oh, it's a Hollings' head. These series are series of plays. Twins. Here. They're twins, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. Oh yeah. Kicks up, and it's no good off to the left. <laughs> so 7:15 left in the first quarter. The Indians score first, and the score: Shamokin area six, Mount Carmel area zero. Well, something new for Big Red. They're behind now for the first time. Well, that's true. You know, one of the, one of the comments: uh, uh, Mount Carmel hasn't played. Uh, anybody uh, of the same caliber that, that Chamokin has played up to this point. You figure Blue Mountain, North Schuylkill is one of the top yeah. teams in the area, you know. Uh, so they figure that uh, they could give them a tough time. Well, that will, we're going to see some character here because this is the first time Big Red finds itself behind in a football game in 1994. 
Well, there was a lot of talk out of Shimogun today that they are going to try throwing the ball a lot tonight, and they came out doing it. You that's can right. see that's what's happening. So uh, just have to back off and see what happens from here and see if they can defend that. One thing, one thing we, uh, our sports information guy, Mr. Gergen, of course, the man who knows all, spoke about last night, and there was some concern about it. The coal bucket tradition began in 1951. That is true. Hollingshead taken by Dave Evans on about the 20-yard line. Breaks it to the right side, to the 25, and up to the 30. First down and 10 red tornadoes with a little better field position this time from the 30-yard line. Go ahead, Warren. Well, what there was, there was some... Uh, concerned about there was a, I guess a t-shirt or something made with the coal bucket but it only had gone back to the early 60s Se 70s seven. I think 71 but yeah 19, that, that was down there 1951 was when the coal bucket originally changed hands and it changed hands with Shimokin because Shimokin won the original coal bucket game they, really? they took the first coal bucket yes they did Higgins sets the red tornadoes pitch back to Veach find some running room at the 31 to the 35 to the 40, first down, Red Tornadoes. Nice run by Brett Veach, the young sophomore. Uh, what a great tradition, though. You know, it, you, in this area, it gives you, it gives the boys that much more to, to fight for down on the field. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, did, I just think that's a great tradition. It originally changed hands in 1951 between two booster organizations. Of course, Mount Carmel was then just Mount Carmel, and Shimokin was just Shimokin. But Johnny Patrick from Mount Carmel mm -hmm. And John Barr, a name in Shimokin area, will, will recognize right. immediately. Sure. A fantastic athlete. Those were the two guys that, I guess, uh, originally Higgins to Gonzalo. It. Ooh, just over his reaches. Second down and 10 for the Red Tornadoes. That's about all the tidbit I can give you on Cole Bucket now. <laughs> I went through it all right there. Number 20, Jamie Wesloski defending on that play. Second down and 10, 628 left in the first. Higgins to Veach. Off the right side, gain of only about two yards. Initial hit in there by number 41 from the Indians, uh, Indians Todd Hockenbrock. Also down there in the bottom, number 79, John May. Last night we talked about the uh, a little bit about the weather, and I was very surprised, uh, Coach Williams. We, we talked about the rain, and of course it was raining. It rained heavy for the, I guess, 24-hour period before the game, and he seemed to be unconcerned whatsoever. He didn't really? care what the field looked like when he got here tonight. He said it will just be a football game between two good teams. Higgins, back to pass, looks at Gonzalo, on the fly with Weslowski. Good reception by Gonzalo on the 32-yard line. First down and 10 red tornadoes in Indian territory. I'll tell you what, he was about as well defended as you're going to defend that, a He was receiver. right with them all the way. He was right there. Great pass by uh, Higgins to Gonzalo. That's the 21st consecutive game that Joel Gonzalo has caught a reception. Really? Yeah, we didn't want to break row. any. Uh, My goodness. It's a tied record with Nig uh, Diglio right now. Oh, is it? Right. Tied? Okay, all right. 21 games in a row. Higgins sets the red tornadoes. Quick handoff to Sheptock. Gain of maybe about one yard. Hit in there by number, uh, or hit by uh, Rob Taylor, number 74. I guess you put your best athlete, or at least you feel your best athlete on, on a guy like uh, like DeGonzo. But unfortunately, what Wislowski will battle for the entire evening is the height advantage. Right. He's so much shorter right. than, than, than uh, Gonzo that he's going to have a heck of a time. And that's what they've done. Now, Joel comes out to the right, and you can see Wislowski yeah. also coming out with him. Shep talk goes in motion. This is a quick pitch out to Vich. Sheppy with a great block. Vich cut it back in and gains only about three or four yards. 79 made a great play on that one, John May. Shep talk uh, <laughs> said hello to, to Dave Ritchie there in a big way on that play. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> you don't want him coming at you that fast with his shoulders squared. Third down and seven for the Red Tornadoes. Higgins, straight drop back, looking over the middle. Now tucks the ball away and runs with it. And we have flags on this play, and Higgins breaks it down around. We'll have the first down at about the 
20 yard, 15 yard line, but there's flags on the play. Now that's going to have to go against Big Red where right. it was thrown at, I'm sure. Holding. Holding called against the Red Tornadoes, and this one's coming back. Rather famous referee out there tonight, which we have the cameras on right now, Frank D'Angelo. He uh, did the Little League World Series game. He, oh, was, he was the, the, guy, the guy behind the plate, plate with yeah. the little camera on, taking all the pictures for us to watch. And I saw him, yeah, yeah. We'll get celebrity status even in the, in the referees tonight. Mount Carmel now faced with a third down and 17, 4-11 left in the first quarter, the ball on the 44-yard line. And Mount Carmel area forced to call a timeout. Now it's tough to find that third and 23 play is what we're looking for now. It's, that's a tough call. Tough break for Big Red. They were driving down the field. An unfortunate holding call there. Head coach Whitey Williams out in the huddle with his Red Tornadoes right now. And coach was smoking. It just came out on the field as their line coach. That's uh, Greg Scavage right. from Mount Carmel originally. Go, go. Mount Carmel area senior cheerleaders with Twisty on the field. Big night for Red Tornadoes and the Indians here. Uh, you know, you live for this one every year. Something unusual you see on this time out, if you're watching Mount Carmel area football, is you got Coach Williams on the field. <laughs> he seldom goes to the huddle. Right. And he, in fact, he made a point of that last night. He seldom goes to the huddle during during those things. He, he usually sends uh, Coach, Coach Conley, Conley out. And, yes. uh, uh, he didn't this time, so I guess he mean, meant business when he went out there tonight. Third down and 23. Higgins, straight drop back, big rush. Screen pass to Wargo. Find some running room down. Oh, still style. going. Oh, goodness. Still, still going. going. What a great run by Joe Wargo. I thought he was out of bounds on about the 30, oh, and he makes goodness. it down to about the 25-yard line. Oh, big play. Now, not enough for the first down, but close, it real was, close. It was Joe Wargo and three Indians. Yeah, and he got I, through them right? somehow. Right on the sideline. I thought they had him pinned, and now it brings up, a, I guess, fourth and four yards to go. A much better predicament than they were they were in a little while ago. But that was that was sheer guts on one of those part there when he went down the sideline. Fourth down and four for the Red Tornadoes. 3.52 left in the first. Higgins fakes the handoff to Sheptock, looks at Higgins, but follows Beach out for the first down and more. Down to the five. Oh, close. Probably about the six-yard line. First down and ten. Red Tornadoes knocked out of bounds by number 11, Brian Stamen. I'll tell you what. A, a nice play. Higgins. That was a beautiful play. Higgins. It was a fake dive. They had the end go out. The end was covered, and they just snuck uh, Vici out of the backfield on that one. you got to give the coaching staff a little bit of credit on that one. That was a beautiful call. It really yes, it was. was. He caught Shemokin in area really at, the, at a bad time. Uh, they never expected to see him come out like that. He was totally uncovered. No one, there was no, no one on him. He had no defender even chasing him at the time he got the ball. Higgins sets the red tornadoes. This one's going to Veach. Up the middle for about a two or three yard gain. Hanging on down at the bottom of the pile. Number 42 for the Indians, Josh McBride. Yeah, Josh, I'll tell you what, Josh made a uh, heck of a tackle there. I think Veach would have scored it through for either a few more or if not a touchdown. Second down and goal to go from the four-yard line for the Big Red. Gonzalo split far to the left. Costello, Sheptock, and Wargo in the backfield. This one's going to Wargo off the left side. Fumble, Fumble. on the play. Looked like it was recovered by a tornado. It was. <laughs> Either Michael Higgins, number 10, or number 61, Jamie Rowland on the ball. But Mount Carmel now faced with a third down and about five or six yards to go, goal to goal. Higgins pitches back to Veach. Finds a little room, He's got takes the it corner. to the outside. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. 
Great blocking in there. Shep Great talk was in there. In there. Shep and talk. look for uh, 61 Roland. John Yash, uh, the Shaq, yeah. number 69. Jamie Roland, 61. Good play made in there by the Red Tornadoes. And coming off here on that side also, number 78, Dave Baxi. Yeah, I, you saw those guys, and what happened was they had moved into the end zone so quickly, and you saw them screening right. him, and all you get to do is screen for him, and he's in, and that's well, exactly what happened. Red Tornado setting up for Costello's kick, and Costello tries to change his shoe. He did. He comes in now. I think he's going to make <laughs> he it. He did change it, but it was getting tough there. Snaps down, kicks up, and it's good. Well, the thing on, on that touchdown, Warren, if you look, when they kick to the outside, it just it gave Veach so much running room yeah. laterally yeah. that he had, he had more than enough time with the speed to get it in. Yeah, that was, that was a nice play. And now I think you see, I just talked about character a second ago, and, and you saw it. That's a quality team. Now they go down 6 nothing. They're surprised a little bit. And, and even with, with a really debilitating penalty there, when right. they're down close, they're still able to put the, the touchdown and the seven points up. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in the first. Seven to six. Big red in the lead. Joe Costello will kick off for the Red Tornadoes and deep for the Indians, number 20, Jamie Wislowski, and number two, Paul Yost. Well, you got the two speed backs for Shemokin back deep. Now you know why he kicked the squibber the first time. I'll tell you what, you though. It's, it's unusual that he did that because last night we talked about that same thing, too, at supper, and he seemed to feel if you've got a team with the strength, go right at it. Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to go right at them. We're not going to fool around with it now. It, now, that didn't pan out the first time around. Now, whether he was just trying to surprise them or whatever, but this time, Nope, again. same kick. Squibs are taken by number nine, which is Jason Lynch. Hit in there initially by 32, Joe Chicatano, 41, Joe Costello, number 30, Sean Jamin, and 83, which is Eric Higgins. Well, obviously, obviously. He wasn't telling me the truth last night when I asked that <laughs> question. And we're going to have a long talk to next Thursday night. First down and 10 for the Indians. The ball on the 39-yard line. 2.14 left in the first quarter. A packed house at Mount Carmel Silver Bowl tonight. Quick handoff to Weslowski. Down under the bottom of the pile, 44, Sean Sheptock. Helping out in there on the tackle, number 52, Stosh Pulinovich, and 63, Scott Grady. We had the uh, supper last night. We had the law firm of Higgins and Higgins with us. Oh, good. Uh, the brother combination showed up to have a uh, bite to eat with us. We, of course, had the Gonzo man with us, and we had Mr. Boyer with us last night. He uh, stopped in to have a bite to eat with us also and to share some moments with us. It was, it was a good time had by all, certainly. Number 81, Brett Hollinghead split far left. Wes Lasky on the quick handoff. In there, Sean Sheptock. Also number 52, Stosh Poldenovich. I think in what I had spoke about earlier, and, and I think you're seeing it here a little bit, the Shemokin area, the running game, the line is not moving off the ball. They're not, they're not penetrating the defensive line. We're coming to them. Right. And if that were to continue, that the running game would be certainly in trouble for the remainder of the night. They don't seem to have that push that, that they're able to get him free. Indians come to the line, third down and five. 55 seconds left in the first. Stamets back to pass. Big rush by Hepler. He's An down. intentional grounding on that. No, they're nope, saying nope, he's they're down. They're saying he's down. down. Okay. Yeah, his knee was down when he threw the ball. Big rush by Corey Hepler, Mark Burns, and Stosh Pulinovich. Tell hey, you what, it's a fairly athletic move on his part, and Stamets' part, to, to get to rid get of the, the ball right, even right, when he was being right. hung on by those guys. But he, he was, his knee was down. That'll go down as a sack. Fourth down and 19, the Red Tornadoes hold. Nice kick by Brian Weichel. Taken by Gonzalo on about the 34-yard line. It was a fair catch. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. 43 that time, Scott Belfonte was uh, the reason he called a fair catch. He was right in his face there as the ball was coming down. I think you're seeing a little bit of the line now. You're seeing where the real line play is going to be. 
if, if Shemokin area continues to be dominated that way on the line, it could be for a long right. night. Wislowski's an excellent back, and so is Joe's, but neither have the size to really make a push into the line. They need that little crack to get through before they're going to really do the damage. Higgins with Shep talk in motion. On the option, pitch to Brett Veach around the right side and run out of bounds on about the 44-yard line, close to a first down for the Red Tornadoes. Boy, some nice blocking on that play, and really one person to beat, yeah. and Brett's gone on that play. Yeah. A little different from last year and the, and the year before, Warren, when, you, when you're talking the size of the line that Chamokin came down with, and we went we oh, went down yeah. to Chamokin last year. Well, they had the apartment building or something that one yes, year. Was that, that last year? That or? was last year and the year before. You My know, goodness. once they opened up a hole, it stayed open. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they were they were huge. Now this year they're not. They're they're a much smaller, but they're size. faster. You know, yeah. it, it, you give up one for the other. Joe Wargo handed the ball and a loss of about two yards. Stopped in there by number 75 from the Indians, Dave Robel. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. The score: Mount Carmel area seven, Shemokin area Indians six. Yeah, we'll take this moment to mention to you that we are the Mount Carmel area broadcasting operation here. We are broadcasting on WLX 267. It's our microwave signal. We are an instructional fixed television service. You find us on the service electric cable television uh, system on channel 13, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Very good. Uh, that was almost as good as what I did it last week. Guys, I'll tell you what, I watched the game on Wednesday night, and I don't want to, you know, throw stones, but the only thing I remember about that game was a lot of dead air, okay? A lot of dead <laughs> air space. I'm, I don't know what to say about that, you know? I assumed that you were having microphone trouble. It was the only thing I could think of. You well, know, that's, that's, <laughs> that was one thing. You're, you're right. <laughs> More headset than microphone, and I'll leave it at that. Look at Veach running the ball on that play. After three games, Veach's had 36 attempts with uh, gaining 307 yards. Average, he averages 8.5 a carry. Now, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty, pretty good hefty yards. carry, isn't it? That's, uh, <laughs> it's not a bad average. Second down for the Red Tornadoes. Big shift for the Tornadoes here. Higgins looks at Ooh. Higgins. Higgins looks at Higgins and a good reception on about the 48-yard line. It's a law firm that time. They, uh, they filed a writ in... Uh, we gained some yards. Third down and six for the Red Tornadoes with the ball on the 48. It was interesting. The younger Higgins uh, said last night they were kidding him about playing with his brother. And one of the goals he had set for himself was that one of the, the goals he had mentioned and written down him was that he wanted to catch a pass in a varsity game from his brother. Oh, really? And he did. And now he's already right. set him high. He wants to catch a touchdown pass from <laughs> his brother. So he's moving along pretty well. Higgins. Pitch back to Veach off the right side. Oh, there First down and more. Down to about the 20 yard line. And I'll tell you what, run out of bounds on about the 19 yard line by number 15, Dave Ritchie. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to see if they, if they make a replay of this uh, during the game, you watch the guard kick the end out. There was a quick pitch and Brett just cut straight up. There was a hole in there for him and that was it, he was gone. That's why he has a, an 8.5 uh, yard per carry average. I guess that's what does it. 11.08 left in the first half. Mount Carmel area first down and 10 from the 20 yard line. Pitch back to Wargo, cuts it up through to the 15 and down to about the 15 yard line. Tackled in there by number 75 from the Indians, which is Dave Robel and number 44, Harry Reed. I think Joe Costello was a little upset. <laughs> you that? They are, the uh, cast man, huh? The cast man. <laughs> One block. Second down and six for the Red Tornadoes. Higgins talking to his backfield. Veach off the right side. Good blocking that time from the Red Tornadoes again, but collapsed very nicely by number 36 for the Indians, which is Mike Romanowski. Good play by Romanowski there, because we saw the hole from here again, yeah. and he just came over and yeah, collapsed he, he on that He was quick one. on that. He did make a, make a good defensive play, because that play is designed to spring him to the outside and along the sideline, and it looked like it's pretty clear out there. Had he gotten out, he may have scored. Third down and five for the Red Tornadoes. 
Higgins brought the play in for Higgins. The law firm uh, <laughs> discussed it, and now we're ready to run it. Higgins back to pass. Hit Shep talk out of the backfield, and it'll be close to a first down, but I think he <laughs> slipped, and he, he didn't get yeah. the first down. Sheppy. <laughs> Shippy was open. His arms could be about one inch longer because he couldn't stand up and catch it <laughs> at the same time. It was a little bit longer than uh, than he wanted it to be, and he was unable to, to to move with the ball. He went right down with it. Fourth down and one for the Red Tornadoes. The ball on the 11-yard line. Costello, <laughs> Sheptock, and Beach in the backfield for the Red Tornadoes. Higgins pitches back to Veach, cuts it up to the nine, to the five. Touchdown. Touchdown the Red Tornadoes. Brett Beach, ladies and gentlemen, and that was Brett Beach there. You think he's a small guy? How many guys did he carry in there with him? How small is he? And you know what? It was Poochie's ankles that kept him up at the end. Right near the end, he looked at Poochie's ankles, and he said, put me over, and they did. I'll tell you what, I saw Brett's ankles. I wish he'd give them back to Poochie. <laughs> Joe, Cost the kid. <laughs> Joe Costello in to attempt the extra point for the Red Tornadoes. Snaps back, kicks up, and it's good. With eight minutes and 56 seconds left in the first half, the score, the Red Tornadoes 14, the Indians 6. Well, you want to go out on a limb here? You, you think he's going to put it down deep, give it to Yost or Wislowski? My guess is he won't kick it there all game now. Right. To tell I, the I, truth, I, I think, think so he's going to do the same thing the whole rest yeah. of the game. I think he's he's sort of giving up the, the yardage, giving them a little bit better field position and saying, okay, defense, yeah. take over. Yeah. You know? yeah, you get that feeling the way the way he's kicking. Now we have Aaron Kuzmik back and uh, Yost, 58. Well, he's uh, slipped Wesloski up into the line. They're, they're putting Wesloski in now the second line, back. right? Yeah. Yeah, well, right about. in the second line. And the ball has been being taken by Jason Lynch, number five. So right now they have Wesloski up in there, and they have a big guy in the back. Aaron Kuzmik. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm telling you what, how many off, How many times do you see number 58, a number 58 go by <laughs> for, the, for the kickoff? That doesn't Oh, happen. they're going to try an onsider. Bounces down. Recovered by the Indians, but that was a, a, a another look at the kicking game of Mount Carmel area. <laughs> we're, we're certainly providing a lot of excitement in the kickoffs anyway. The... My goodness, that's uh, trying to catch him on. That was heads-up play by Shimokan area, too, because... That was a lineman, I assume. I, 71. I, that was number 71 okay. recovered the ball. I'll tell you what, that was only two yards past the... Uh, yeah, that's heads up play on, on his part. Brian Walsh gets on the ball for the Indians. Woo. Right, and I'll tell you but what. But he, he can recover it anywhere. Like, he can get it nine yards up. It's true. that Red Tornadoes that had to get it back there. And it that's was right. a good kick. It made it 12 yards. It, it was a good kick by Costello. Timeout called by the Indians. 8.35 left in the first half. An interesting game here from the Silver Bowl. Now, it's a tough game so far. We, we thought the same thing. Now, now, Big Red, we will say, at least right now, is controlling the line of scrimmage, and that is a little bit of the difference in the game. That's right. Schmokin area scoring their points on a, on a fumble deep in our territory and then went in for the on fourth down, went in for the score. So it wasn't like it was a sustained drive, where a Mount Carmel area now has put together two uh, lengthy drives for the score to come up to 14 points. So they seem to be having their way a little bit on the line right now, and, and – uh, uh, Veach is having a big night again, which you know we you pretty much expect all the time. So, Shimokan area one has to put a, a, a drive down here because the one thing that's going to happen to them is they're going to wear out on defense. Uh, you're chasing Veach around, you know that, that's that wears you out in itself. Yeah. If you're on the field a long time, towards the end of this game, that's going to start to show. So they've got to hope that their offense now puts some uh, some yardage down here and, and uh, stays on the field for any length of time. Red Hollinghead split far right for the Indians. Richie goes in motion. Stamets hands off to Wesloski. Out around the left side. Big play by number 52, Stosh Pulinovich. Oh, the Stosh man. That was Stosh pulled the jersey. <laughs> that time. 
<laughs> so I pulled the jersey. Second down and 15 for the Indians, and great play by pulling over that time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. A five-yard loss for, for the Indians on that play. And again, that's, it goes back to what I just said. They need to produce offensively right. here, or it will turn into a long game. Richie split far right this time for the Indians. The ball on the 44-yard line. Stamets back to pass. Looks at Hollinghead. Broken oh, up nicely yes. by number 27, Dave Evans. Great oh. play from his cornerback position. Evans, Evans, great play. That was. I'll nice tell you what, he, he laid straight out and got his hand inside there to get the ball out. Yeah, that was a good play. See, now that's, that's, that's the thing. If you give Stamets enough of time to throw the ball, he is accurate, and he can, he can throw the ball with the best of them. Third down and 15 for the Indians. Stamets from the shotgun formation. Snaps back. Corey Hepler in on the rush. Now Stamets looking downfield. Mark Burns, Joel Gonzalo, oh. intercepted by Joel Gonzalo. Burns, he knocked it up, and Gonzalo with the big interception on the 25-yard <laughs> line. You don't want the Gonzo's hands down <laughs> like that, because once he touches the ball, he's bringing it in. That's amazing. He went up for that ball, looked like he brought it down one hand. Yeah, that's amazing. I, mean, I, told, I told you last year, Blitnikoff gave him his hand. He's, really? He's using Freddie Blitnikoff's hands this year, and it's working out really nice. 7.42 left in the first half. Red Tornadoes on offense. Higgins, straight drop back. Looks at Gonzalo, running with Weslowski. Oh, what a catch. Oh, man. Unbelievable. Oh, jeebers. The best coverage you could see of Weslowski, and Gonzalo brings one in on about the 48-yard line of Shimoka. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping we replay this, and I'm going to tell you what. On any level of football, you will not see a better executed play between a quarterback and a, and a receiver than you saw right there. Well, it doesn't get any better. I'll tell you what, Warren. You were up at Penn State last week, but against Marion, uh, Higgins threw at least 35 yards, right, Bob? Right. And he hit Joel two steps before he went out of bounds over his shoulder, yeah. right? Came back another series right after that and uh, dropped back, and he hit Joel about 35 yards again. Down the middle, did not break stride, and away he went. Uh, you're talking a combination here that set records in the high school uh, that's going to be standing, I think, yeah. for an awful long time. Yeah, it's, it's really going to be tough to beat it because they're just so close. They're, they're, you know, they're, at, they're at, at supper club with you, and, and one saying something as the other one's about to say it, and they're thinking the same things. And I mean, it's just, it's just something that when you grow up together like they have, it, it's... It doesn't happen that often. It's right. just, it's just a, a joy to watch it and to enjoy, you know, those two kids and enjoy the success that they have together because it's, it's unmatched, and it may be unmatched for a very long time to come. That timeout was taken by the Indians, and I think they're talking about how to double-team Gonzalo. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, Coach uh, Williams had stated this how many times. He picks out their best, and he goes right at them. Yeah. There's Wislowski. That's the best on Shemokin, and he's going right at him. And he's not having bad coverage. It's, it's not no. that he's out of position. Sean no. Sheptock carries the ball for about a five-yard gain. Initial hit made by number 15, Dave Ritchie. Yeah, if you if you look at the films after the game, and I'm sure when Shemokin area does, they're not going to be able to look at Wislowski and say, hey, you know, no. you, you did this wrong. Or he's right there. He's, he's doing everything like he can a do. He's like a blanket. He it's is. Just, uh, it's just fantastic uh, passing and catching. Seven minutes left in the first half. Gonzalo and Wargo split to the left for the Red Tornadoes. The ball on the 45-yard line of the Indians. Flags on the play. Hey, too much time. We have a dead ball foul. A legal no. procedure called against the Red Tornadoes. I didn't see that one. I don't know what we did. Oh, there. Frankie sees some that aren't always there. <laughs> 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 no, I really didn't see anybody moving or anything, but he, he must have caught somebody doing something. Sometimes it's such an imperceptible it's just move, a but, move, right? You know, that's all it takes, and, and, and you've committed a penalty. 6.37 left in the first half. Now, he's an extremely great personality. We talked to him when he came in the gate tonight. What a great ref. Higgins. Pitch back to Higgins from Veach. Looks on the fly to Gonzalo, and he's going to come back. 
and oh, make the reception. He caught it. Make the reception on about the 26 yard line. It was. <laughs> oh no, that's unbelievable. It was just one that was hung up there. Stamets and Richie going for it, and the Gonzo, as you call him, Warren <laughs> makes the catch. Oh, Gonzo's in another zone, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He's crossed over this universe, and he's playing somewhere else right now. Well, unbelievable. I'll tell you what, I don't, I, I did not. I was looking over on the other side. There was red jersey, and it looked like 31. It might have been Corey over on the other side. He was wide open also. Six minutes left in the first half. 14 to six. Red tornadoes in the lead. Pitch back to Veach. Makes a nice move. This one He's gone. is going all the way. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. No penalty flags, and it's a touchdown. Unbelievable. You, uh, he he had one slide move from the defense. Whoever he eluded right? there. What, what was the player that he eluded there? Because that guy, I'm sure, has got to be as frustrated as you can get right now. Well, you, you know, he had, he had two defenders on him. I mean, straight ahead of him. And all he did was he made an inside move, pulled them, in, uh, you know, offline just enough. Just, you know, their shoulders were not square with them anymore. And then he cut off down the sideline. Unbelievable. I mean, that's... That is something to watch, it really is. Joe Costello gets his shoe changed in time. Higgins holding, snaps back, it's down, kicks up. <laughs> and it's good. I'm not talking about like, like kicking under pressure. I mean, he runs in and in a You're second right. after he gets there, the ball centered and he's kicking. 553 left in the first half to score. The Red Tornadoes 21, the Shemokin area Indians six. Well, you know, what better way? You have nothing to think about. You know, the ball goes back, you got to kick it. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. It doesn't leave much time nope. to contemplate. No, he does doesn't it? have to think about it, <laughs> does he? He has, he has his shoe tied, and a second later, he's kicking the ball. So. <laughs> Shemokinary better think about calling a timeout just to let him uh, take a, a thought about it. If well, that keeps up, though, he's going to have to tell everybody in the huddle, you know, we're planning on scoring a touchdown, guys. Let me come out of play here. <laughs> I got my shoe on here so we can get back in. Well, Coach Edwards was talking to him as he was changing his shoe and giving him the tee and everything else. And, and I'm sure, you know, they're, they're looking to see where Roslowski's at and, and uh, Yosti and everybody else. And, well, and this time deciding, they put Wieslowski you know. and Yost deep. Right. And uh, they've gone back to that lineup with number nine, Jason Lynch, on the left side of the, of the back line. But again, what head game since the opening kickoff, yeah. you know, <laughs> onside and then we're pulling Wieslowski. It's a real strategy up. going on. Yeah, it on. is. <laughs> it's a strategy on both sides. <laughs> Costello with the little squibber again. Fumbled there, now picked up by Lynch. Finds some running room and dives through to about the 35 yard line. First down and 10 Indians from the 35. Flag went down. Yep. Flag, flag went up. Yeah, up and down. Yeah, up it was up in down. the air. That was a late flag. I don't know what we're going to do there. And I'm not really sure who made the tackle on that one, so I apologize to whoever did. Personal foul called against the Red Tornadoes. Dead ball foul. First down and 10 Indians right now in Red Tornado territory on the 49 yard line. Stamets with trips to the right side for the Indians. He's going to do the handoff to Harry Reid. Wow, Ooh. he's met in there. I didn't see who that was, but I'm guessing it was a linebacker. Well, Stotch Pulinovich got up. I see uh, 70. Jo Joey Costello, number 70. Jason Rohrbaugh was there. So there, you know, the, there was an initial hit, and then yeah. good gang tackling by the Red Tornadoes. Second down and 12. Well, they, you know, if you notice, though, they've lost yardage on, I guess this would be the, the fourth consecutive offensive right. play that I remember that they've gone backwards instead of frontwards on, on offense. Stamets with the end around the Richie. Oh! No way are you going to fake Mark Burns out on that one. All right, the burn man. He sent somebody else to Chester Crozier. Well, the burn know, man. I'll tell you what happened there. They had, they had Aaron Kuzmik. Uh, pulling to kick out on Burnsy, but Burnsy beat him to the yeah, backfield. Yeah, he was, he was, he he was uh, past him already. Right, he was already deep. Third yeah. down and 19 the burn to man go for you. the Indians. They chop you right to Chester Crozier, to the burn unit. <laughs> 
Stamets, back to pass, flags on the play Drop where it's block. normally holding. There's Yost wide out there Flag. and catches the ball on the six yard line, That's but it looks like this one's coming be back. Florida, be yeah. Florida needs. We, That's everybody, the whole stadium yeah. saw that. Everybody there saw it. An illegal block called against the Indians, but again, number two, Paul Yost has the ability to get right. open. Paul has speed. You, you saw it there. Well, Coach Williams had a healthy respect for him last yes, night. He, he, he discussed him at length. And again, you know, you, you mentioned statements here because that was a perfect pass. I mean, we know that kid didn't lose the arm from nope. last year. Let's face it, he still has everything, he, you know, he has there. Uh, he's having maybe a little bit more difficult time with his offensive line than he's used to. And that, you know, anybody. Well, you know, again, like Higgins, this is his fourth year there. Right. In right. that position. So, you know, and. Uh, and he's a good quarterback. He's an excellent of, oh, quarterback. Oh, yes, he is. Excellent quarterback. He, he, he just he's just having a little bit tougher time this year, and that's all it is. But he can throw the ball, and he'll kill you if you let him throw it. Shemokin forced way back now with a third down and 32, 356 left in the first half. The ball's now on about the 28-yard line. Stamets pitches back to Weslowski. Chased by Rohrbaugh, <laughs> and the initial hit by Rohrbaugh, but then uh, also in there, Sean Sheptok. Number 52, Stosh Poldenovich, and looks like 77, Billy Anderson. That's one, that's one of the few times, so you're not used to that, where the actual, the roadblock chases you. <laughs> <laughs> and catches you. <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> Brian Weichel into punt for the Indians. Good snap. Kicks away a lone line driver. Ooh. Over the head of number 27, Dave Evans picks it up on about the 15 yard line. Mm. Starts back up field with the ball and is tackled on about the 21 yard line. That was a good kick. I, that caught him by surprise a little bit there. Good kick. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes, 2.57 left in the first half. Higgins pitches back to Veach. Cuts it back up the middle. Fumble. Fumble, Fumble on the play. And the ball recovered by number 22 of the Indians. Chad Varney. So the Indians get their break they needed with two minutes and 36 seconds left in the first half. That's probably the, the real downside so far in this game is Malcolm Larry's had trouble with the ball, island the ball, and that's the first time this year. That's three fumbles now that, that they've had in the first half. We hadn't seen that uh, throughout the year so far. And of course, that could be attributed to the caliber of, of the team they're playing right now, too. You're going to see it aired out, maybe. Stamets fakes to Weslowski. Looking at the short man coming back. Great play cast made man. by Joe Costello. <laughs> the cast man. That was coming out to number 44, Harry, Harry Reed, Harry out of the Reed. backfield. Yeah. Right. Got the fullback out. You know what? I, they, they looked like the play that Mount Carmel ran the two right. times. One to uh, Brett and the mm -hmm. other one to uh, Sheptock. Yeah. Uh, delayed halfback pass. Second down and 10 for the Indians. Two minutes and nine seconds left in the second quarter. There's the shift play again for the Indians. Stamets pitches back to Wislowski. Tries it out around the left side. Looked like Rohrbaugh with the initial hit in there. Also assisting on that, number 31, Corey Hepler, 41, Joe Costello, and 52, Poldenovich. Running, running wise, guys, they just they don't go over the line of scrimmage well, now. That's what, five, six, seven plays now. They haven't dented the line of scrimmage in a running play. Well, the defense have certainly proved itself since the beginning of the season on the run. I mean, they've just done an outstanding job. Third down and 10 for the Indians. 132 left in the first half. Stamets from the shotgun formation. Mm -hmm. B 
Big rush on Stamets. Stotts pulling Ovich on top and down on the bottom of the pile for the Red Tornadoes, number 63, Scott Grady. All right. And again, they spread everybody out, get our defense spread out, but we had good coverage, uh, a little bit too long for Stamets, and he had to move out of the pocket. Fourth down and 10 for the Indians. Ball's on about the 18 yard line. Stamets from the shotgun again. Snaps back to Stamets, looking over the middle zone. Back there. Oh, he dropped the ball. Covered by Brett Veach, number 81, on the reception, which was Brett Hollinghead. And as he, as it looked like he kept his feet in. He did. But he dropped the ball coming out of bounds. Mount Carmel area, first down and 10, 33 seconds left on the clock. Great throw by Stamets, though. Uh, he, he's accurate. It's, um, it's unbelievable. He hit Yost down on the left-hand side where they had the big penalty, unfortunately, and, drew, and brought back a touchdown there. And here he hit uh, Holland's head out, out of bounds. Yeah, he's, uh, that's a major league arm. That yes, is. I mean, it is. He's got an arm on him. And Mount Carmel area will be happy to down the ball right here. 21 to 6, the big red in the lead as the halftime wears down. Exciting first half for both these teams. Mount Carmel area 21, Shamokin area 6. We'll be back with halftime stats in one moment. Back to start the second half, and we have some of the halftime stats, Warren. Well, Mount Carmel area rushed the ball 17 times for a total of 113 yards. They passed seven of eight times for 118 yards. Individually in the rushing department, Veach rushed the ball 10 times for 110 yards. He also had all three TDs, I might add, in the first half. Uh, Sheptock three times for three yards. Wargo three times for one yard. In the receptions, Gonzalo, the Gonzo, three times for 73 yards. I'll get back to him in a second. Wargo, one for 18 yards. Veach, one for 20 yards. The other half of the law firm, Mr. Eric Higgins, one for four. And Sheptock, one for three. In the first down department, Mount Carmel area had seven. Shemokin had two. Now, before I move on to the Shemokin, let me mention that we had already said that Gonzalo has caught now a reception in 21 consecutive games, which ties him with Frank Niglio. But Frank's in double trouble right now because... Gonzalo now has a total reception yardage of 1,264 career yards. Ladies and gentlemen, he needs 10 yards to break the all-time yardage mark at Mount Carmel area, also held by Frank Niglio. Now try to picture this. You're going to see him, either in this game or in the following game, break the all-time yardage, where you already have his, his throwing partner, Higgins, has already broken the all-time right. yardage. What you need to remember here is you may not see that again in your lifetimes where this is occurring in the same uh, time frame with these two young men. Quickly before we, we kick off, let me go to Shemokin, and it's, it's about what you had seen. Shemokin has rushed the ball 14 times in the first half for a minus 16 total yards. They were two of nine in passing for a total of 24 yards and their lone touchdown uh, off that uh, fumble recovery deep in Mount Carmel area uh, territory. Brian Hollinghead will kick off for the Indians to start the second half. Taken by Dave Evans on about the 25 yard line up to the 30, breaks it around to the right and is tackled on the 31 yard line. In on the tackle, number two for the Indians, Paul Yost and assisting number 43, Scott Belfani. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes on the 32 yard line. Now, if we're, if we're going to surmise what occurred at halftime, you had Mount Carmel area coaching one talking about the fumbles. Hold on to the football. Right. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure that was a big thing. In the Shemokin area side, they had to be talking about getting some offense moving. That's what they're lacking right now to stay in the game. Higgins, back the pass to start the first half. Tucks the ball away, runs with it, and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Stopped in there by number 75 of the Indians, which is Dave Robel. 
depending on what Shamokin Canaria does on offense, you may also see this in the second half, should they be held under 100 yards? And it'll be, it will be also that no team this year has gone over 100 total yards offense total? against Mount Carmel Area, yes. Uh, somewhat of a, of a staggering statistic in itself. Second down and nine, Higgins to Veach. Breaks it up the middle, but stuffed that time down on the bottom of the pile. Number 11 for the Indians, Brian Stamets. Looks now like the Indians are bringing everybody up and say, we're coming after you. Right. And uh, if, you, if you can beat us with a quick one, it's going to go, but we're not going to give you time to pass back there or even to get that quick opener. That's a, that's a very dangerous defensive posture, though, with this, with this team. They can hit you from so many different. Look at, look at everybody lined up there. All of them on the line. Big Blitz. rush after Higgins, and it works this time. Hit by number 79, John May, and that's the old Indian defense yep. that we've seen exactly. many, many, many years. years where you line nine guys up on the line, eight guys up on the line, and here you come. Mount Carmel face with a fourth down and 17. It'll bring number 41, Joe Costello, in the punt for the Red Tornadoes. I believe the first punt of, of, of the night for Mount Carmel. That's right. Correct, yeah, our Mount Carmel area. Snaps back. Nice kick by Gonzalo. Going to be taken by Yost. Oh, oh he dropped it. it. He dropped it, and it's recovered by number 15 from the Indians, Dave Ritchie. Great play by Ritchie there. You're he followed kidding. up on Yost and made a great play. I think Yosi was looking for the bounce, and it never occurred. He was coming up hard yeah. on the ball. Um, I think, well, you got to remember that Yost is a sophomore here, too. Yeah. He's he's only a sophomore. That's, that's a mistake that that he'll make. Now, they'll, they'll talk to him about it and tell him that that's not what you need to do, especially in a big game like this. But, again, also, you can remember the field is soggy out there. You're not getting true bounces nope. off anything right now. So that might have confused him a little bit, too, which way he was going to go. First down and 10, Indians 9-29 left in the third quarter. Stamets going to take it himself around the right side. Initial hit made by number 21, Joe Wargo, and then forced out of bounds by 22, Brett Veach, and number 59, Mark Burns. I'll tell you what, uh, Corey was making a, a very nice play on that. He didn't commit himself, but he, he slipped in the grass, and uh, Stamets had gotten around to the outside. Second down and one to go for the Indians. It's probably the longest play from scrimmage, I think, running wise for, for the Indians tonight so far. Indians line up with a second down and one. The ball on about the 46-yard line. Stamets pitches out to Weselowski around the left side, finds some running room, and finally tackled by number 27, Dave Evans, and brings it down to about the 30-yard line, but Stamets is hurt Stamets back is on the 50-yard line. Stamets is down on the field. They're going to bring the trainers out. He's going to have to leave the game, I think. Uh, Did he get up. back up? He got he's himself up. back okay. up and... I, the, the, I thought the referee well, the had trainer, signaled in. No, the trainers were all standing there ready to come on, and, and as they saw him, he sort of put his hand up and said, no, I'm staying in. The referee was right there asking him questions as, as soon as he was trying to get up. First down and 10 Indians. Ball's on the 31-yard line. We'll see. We might come to the right side this time. Stamets, quick hand off to Weslowski. Oh. Scott Grady. Grabs an ankle on the bottom and a great tackle made by the nose guard, Scott Grady. Scott made a nice play. There was a hole there, just enough for uh, Wisloski to get through. A little bit of spark on the offense for the Indians as we as we begin the second half here. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, Sam Chicotano is a great motivator. He knows how to get his, his teams up. You know, I, I, I've seen him you know, many times, even against uh, Shikalimi. Second down and 10 for the Indians. Stamets, quick pass. Looked at Paul Yost and actually threw it to him before Yosti was ready right. to get the ball. Yosti had yeah. a different pass pattern than what yeah, somebody was confused Stamets was looking on, for. What they were trying to do. And Yosti was open, though, on that play. Eight minutes and 11 seconds left in the third quarter. The Mount Carmel area in the lead, 21 to six. Third down and 10, Shemokin area Indians in the shotgun. 
Stamens gets a big rush, but now finds some running room. Brings it down to about the 12-yard line and is knocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line of the Red Tornadoes. Nice play by the quarterback from Shimokan area, Stamets. That was sheer athletic ability on Stamets' part there. He, by right, should have been was sacked for a, for a loss in the backfield and uh, eluded everybody and, and went for That's a right. nice run. And not only that, he put his shoulder down. He took the defender on. He picked up three, four extra oh, yards. Yeah. Ball's outside the 10 yard line, so Shimokan area has the possibility of making a first down, but it's about on the one foot line where that would happen. Stamets going out of the shotgun formation for the Indians. Back to throw, lots of time, looking in the end zone, now getting the rush on from Hepler. Just fires one up, There's and Paul Yost Yost. with a great catch in the end zone, touchdown Indians. Stamets got creamed, but what a nice throw by Stamets to number two, Paul Yost. Can't give him that much time. No, and, and, you can't. Uh, Coach Williams said it last night. You cannot give him time or he will personally kill you, and he just did it. And Yost just atoned for any mistake he may have made earlier with that catch. That was a big catch on Yost's part. So, again, they had the two athletes, the three athletes we had just talked about, now combined to tighten up the score a little bit here. I guess the Indians will go for two here, it looks like, with Stamen still in the... In the well, Shimoka area had, they had problems. They are. They had problems yeah. with an equipment. They wanted an equipment timeout, and uh, it appeared they didn't get it, so they had to bring another lineman in to take the place of... Uh, I'm not positive who went out of the game, but to take the place of whoever had an equipment problem. Stamen's again going from the shotgun formation. Snaps back. Big rush by Corey Hepler, and broken up nicely by number 59, Mark Burns. Well, I'll tell you, Shimokin is in the same boat that we are uh, in the way of extra points. Uh, you know, they brought in a, a, an exchange student to try extra points, never played football before, is in fact playing soccer, and now they had Hollingshead in the first touchdown attempt the extra point. So, you know, the same as what we were, sh shifting people around, trying to find out, you know, who's going to settle in. With seven minutes and 31 seconds left in the third quarter, Mount Carmel area 21, Shimokan area 12. Big drive for the Indians to open up the half. That has to be a, a, a real boost to that, to that team out right. there now. And now Mount Carmel area is going to have to respond. Hollinghead will kick off for the Indians. Kicks it in the direction of number 27, Dave Evans. Brings it up the middle and brings it back to about the 41-yard line. First down and 10 red tornadoes. Well, he stuck his head down that time and went straight up straight. the field. He wasn't going to fool around that time. Nice nice play by Evans. Uh, he can bull his way up there when he has to. I think he's touched the ball just about every kickoff. Yeah, yeah he well, has, It actually. appears they're actually kicking at him. Yeah, they're, they're actually going to kicking him. away from Veach right now, who's in the middle of the field. Not a bad and they're strategy. they're just going to that side <laughs> no. of the field. Both kicking teams are doing some different There's things. There's more strategy I'm... on the kicking teams than you'll see anywhere probably the rest of the year. The big rush from the Indians again. Veach is going to try to go around the outside and is stopped after about a one-yard gain. Nice tackle made by number 44, Harry Reed, and also number 15, from the uh, Indians, Dave Ritchie. And that Ritchie name's been around Shimoka no, football, definitely. hasn't it, Wayne? Yes, it has. I guess Chad Ritchie playing for Boston University right now, right? Uh, is he? Right. Oh. Six minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock. 21 to 12, Big Red in the lead. Quick pass to Hepler. And that one goes over everybody's head, so we'll have a third down and nine. Definitely run around a different page on that one. <laughs> I think Higgins was sort of looking for him to break straight down the field, and Corey well, was sort of cutting. Hepler, was Hepler big, might have had a read there. However, there was a right. big rush already from the Indians. Yeah, he might have been Indians Indians reading it, though, too. Right right. Now. I'm, not, I'm not sure how that play is designed to, to go. Now I'm not sure what defense the Indians went in. 
It was the option play going to come, and Higgins is tackled after about a one-yard loss. Indians had three people on the line of scrimmage. The rest of the defense was all on the left side of the field. Right. And we were going right, so, I mean, it looked like they knew where we were coming on that play. Fourth down and eight. 6-11 left in the third quarter. Joe Costello in the punt for the Red Tornadoes. Snaps back and the kicks away. Yost is going to take it on about the 25-yard line, breaks it out around the left side, finds some running room, and finally stopped by Joe Costello and number 27, Dave Evans. I thought we had a clip back there, and... and he was looking right at it, and, and he, he held his hands out as, as no clip. But I thought that was real close down there. Real close? Jeez, it was right out in the open. <laughs> I, you know. Giving him the benefit on that one. Okay. First down and 10 Indians, 549 left in the third quarter. Stamets with Weslowski in the backfield. Inside handoff to Wesloski, initially hit by number 41, Joe Costello, finished off by Corey Hepler and Stosh Puldenovich, number 52. Well, I talked about that line in the first half as, as not doing anything uh, moving forward. Now you're seeing some line surge on, on the, on the Shemokin well, offensive line, and that's the difference right now in the game, I think. Again, you know, you're looking at their speed, though. You look at they're a little bit, they're, they're moving a little bit quicker. They're spreading our defense out. They're coming out into trips, everything else. They're, they're running slashbacks back through the center. Statements back to pass. Stodge Budolinovich, Puldinovich on the run, gets Wes Lasky. Close to a Shemokin first down, hit by Sean Sheptock. He won't have enough, I don't think, for the first down. Be about a yard short. Corey Hepler comes off for the Red Tornadoes. A two yards short, long, a long two yards. Again, you're seeing a lot of delay passes coming out of the backfield. Tight formation. Wesloski, and he's hit by Bill Anderson, close to a first down for the Indians. I think he has it yeah, where I he's standing so. at the spot. I think they're going to give him a first down here. We're going to have timeout for a measurement. Real close here, guys, but I really think he's going to pick the first down up from, from where the, the, the one guy is standing, and he hasn't moved from where he started standing when they marked the ball. No, <laughs> call me Rongo. He's about <laughs> two, three, four feet short, I guess, or somewhere in there. Two, three, four feet short. Two, three, four feet. How'd I do there? <laughs> I'd go about a foot. I covered it pretty well, didn't yeah. I? Fourth down and a foot for the Indians. 3.59 left in the third quarter. The ball on the 44-yard line. That is a big play. Uh, Big play, I think, for Shemokin yep. area. They need to make this. Uh, this is a big gamble, I, the way it lined up here. Same tight formation for the Indians. Wesloski again. Ooh, and it. this oh. time it looks close, but again, it looks like it'll be a measurement. I don't know. I don't think he moved any further than, than he was to start off with. And again, but it, the spot looks different to me. Right. I, I think he got it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look where it's at. The spot's in he a different it. place here. Timeout called for a measurement again. I'd, I'd be, I don't think he, he got that first down. I really don't, but they spotted that in a different spot. I thought he had it the first time. I thought he got a bad spot the first time around. Now, this time, I think we got the bad spot. Yeah. Oh, he's got to get Goodness, down and Goodness, he look. didn't get it. He didn't no get it. No good. A big defensive stand for the Red Tornadoes. One inch. That's a one-incher there, my well, goodness. I'll tell you what, he had to get down on his hands and knees and look at that. That's how close that was. My goodness. My goodness. I'm glad I'm not wearing that white hat. I screwed that up both times now. <laughs> That's it for calling well, those. It, I was, it was close. I was a mess on both of them. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. 
Gonzalo split far left for the Red Tornadoes. The big rush coming from the Indians right now. Quick hand off to Veach, and it's stuffed up in the middle again for no gain. Well, this is going to be interesting to watch now because the Indians are now saying, I dare you to pass the ball. Now, whether, you know, we, we seem to be so far intent on still running, but they are now right. saying pass the ball if you can. Number 42, Josh McBride in on the tackle. Gonzalo splits far right. Higgins pitches back to Wargo. Trying to come out around the left side, and that one's going for about a two-yard loss. Harry Reed in on the tackle. Number 41 also in there, Todd Hockenbrock. Number 42 in for the Indians, Josh McBride, and some good gang tackling by the Indians on that play. Well, you're, you're trying to go wide against a, a stacked-up defense. Stack it's not going to work. And, and speed, that, that's covering the outside. And, you know, if you watch, they're bringing everybody up. The safety is only maybe seven yards off the line of scrimmage. Two minutes and 17 seconds left in the third quarter. 21 to 12, Red Tornadoes in the lead. Hepler shift out to the left. Higgins back to pass. Looks at Hepler with the big rush. Now Higgins is going to take the ball and bring it around the right side, but gets it back to about the original line of scrimmage. Knocked out of bounds by number 41, Todd Hockenbrock. Tornadoes in a punting situation. Well, Coach Williams is going to have his first real test right here because... That defense is, is, is absolutely stuffing us on the line of scrimmage right now. That's right. Whoa. Oh, high snap. Costello still has it. It's partially blocked by number 26 and covered on about the 46-yard line. So partial block by number 26, Brian Weichel, on the bad snap of the Tornadoes. First down and 10 Indians. 154 left in the third quarter. Now, third quarter has been owned by the Indians in this game, that's for sure. Big Red has got to regroup, especially offensively. Defensively, they're still doing the job, but offensively, they need to move the ball. Stamets going from the shotgun formation. Richie split far right, Yost far left. Rush from Stosh Bulanovic, but Stamets is going to take the ball himself around the left side for about a nine-yard gain. Knocked out of bounds by number 41, Joe Costello. Well, it's three times now in uh, three different series. They, they put trips on one side, split way out on the other side, move the defense all over the place, and Stamets says, cover my guys, I'm going to run around the end. And he's showing that he has some speed and some moves. Second down and one. Indians going from the power formation. Stamets going to take the quarterback sneak. Hit by number 44, Sean Sheptock, and helped out there initially by 59. Mark Burns, first down Indians on the 43-yard line of the Red Tornadoes. The Red's got to tighten up now. This is, this is gut check time. Smoking area has grabbed the, the momentum and, and, and they are using it right oh, now. Oh, definitely, yeah. We've done nothing here in the third quarter. Again, spreading everybody out here. Look at this, look at this formation. Stamets gets the ball, lots of time, looking downfield. Gonzalo there along with Richie and off the fingertips of Richie, but I think he heard Joel's footsteps coming yeah. up. Well covered, again, it, you yeah. know, the pass took so long to get down there that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the coverage that he did have on him uh, tightened up. But again, Richie with a lot of time to look over all his receivers and, and pick out the best one. Yeah, we're not, we're not putting much of a pass rush here, and I know Coach Conley's got to be concerned about that. But at the same time that you're not rushing him, you are also got to keep some containment because right. he's moving around that, so much. You got it. Second down and ten. Big rush from Billy Anderson. Stamets tucks the ball and Ooh. runs with it, but a nice tackle made by number 30, Sean Jamin. That's how you keep containment that time. Yeah. 
That's the end of the third quarter. The score, the Red Tornadoes 21, the Indians 12. Yeah, let me give you a chance once again to tell you we are WKMC-TV. We broadcast from the Mount Carmel Area High School campus. Our, our uh, microwave signal is WLX 267. We are an instructional fixed television service. You find us on the service electric cable system Wednesday night at 8 p.m. I'm also going to take a moment here to read some names to you that, that are the reason that you see us on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Uh, we have David Delasia, Ed Greco, Dan Rose, Gary Tresker, Andrea Wynn, Corey Kent, and Kelly Roseman. Now remember those names because they're the people that make it possible for you people to see this game and for us to have all these strange comments throughout the entire night. You cannot believe the time and energy and work and technical difficulty that goes in to putting a production like this on in, in the kind of thing that you see on TV. And, and we want to also say that they're being rewarded tonight. Uh, the Matucci family has again, as they have been doing for years and years and years, have graciously provided each one of those names that I read to you a free pizza at his restaurant right. in recognition of the fine job that these young people do to bring you this game on a Wednesday night. I want to say thank you to those people. And, and, and they're going to be with you for the rest of the year and for every broadcast you see out of WKMC-TV. Third down and 12 for the Indians. Big rush. Mark Burns in on statements, and he doesn't get the ball to his receiver. So Shemokinary will be faced with a fourth down and 12. And again, that was a screen pass. It was going to the right side. They had everybody over there, the blockers, the receiver, everything. Nobody bothered to even slow Burns up. And uh, there goes Mark, you the, know. The, the burn man wanted, a, right. wanted a, a, a sack there. The burn man thought he had a sack, in fact. Number 26, Brian Weichel into punt for the Indians. He was calling in the uh, the burn unit chopper already. <laughs> Deep for the Red Tornadoes, number 88, Joel Gonzalo, and number 22, Brett Veach. Snaps back, kicks up a bad kick. This one's going high up in the air, bounces on down on about the 20-yard line. So Mount Carmel area, first down and 10 from the 24-yard line. Now it's, it's time now for Big Red's offense to get rolling here. A major, major difference now, a major shift in strategy by the Indians have That's completely right. thrown our offense off kilter a little bit here, and we have not been able to generate anything offensively since the second half began. They've definitely taken the run out, you yeah. know, out of our yeah. game plan right about right at this point. Wislowski with single coverage on Gonzalo. There's nobody else out there with Gonzalo except Wislowski. Higgins trying to hit him. And in and out of his hands and good play, I guess, by Wislowski close to, uh, and Gonzalo down on the on the uh, field right now. Gonzalo's Looks got a like cramp. a cramp. It's that, got that cramp look about it. That was a play where they said, well, we're going to let Gonzalo and Higgins right. do their thing, and we're just going to try to rush everybody. And they did. That's what the Indians did on that play. Now, again, though, there's there's a play there. You let Gonzalo go. Uh, they're rushing everybody. And, uh, you know, anything from an offensive end bringing over the middle, and, and as you look, there were no linebackers there covering the middle or any of the flats. No. Now, uh, Big Red's going to have to pass the ball if they're going to win the game. It's as simple as that. They're, uh, they're toughened up on defense considerably from where they were in the first half. And it's, it's, it's a, a real definite change in strategy more than anything. Right. They, they've really completely changed the way their defense is attacking our offense, and it's working tremendously at the moment. Higgins brings the play back in from the sideline. Second down and 10. Sheptock goes in motion. Pitch back to Veach, gonna bring it outside again. Big play made by number 79 from the Indians, John May. Well, that, now that's, that is the other accepted way to beat the defense. The problem with it is, is they seem to be a little too quick. They're able to cover right. the outside. What they're trying to do is, is quickly pitch out to the side and hope you beat them because they're so ganged up in the middle. But they're able to cover so far speed-wise. Now the problem with that defense is if he beats that guy, it's a touchdown. There's, there's no one left. I mean, there's no there's no pursuit coming nobody, down the nobody line. Nobody help. Right. Yeah, there's no pursuit there. Double team on Gonzalo on this play. Higgins looks 
and throws over the head of number 83, his brother Eric Higgins, but that's where the single coverage was. It right was down. on Higgins. Yeah, he read the defense well. Unfortunately, Big Red now with you know 10.45 remaining in the fourth quarter is forced to punt again. And they have punted on the, I guess this is the third or fourth consecutive offensive series. They have not been able to pick a first down up and well, you might see them coming after the last uh, snap. Good snap this time. Costello with a good kick in the direction of Yost. Bounces on about the 42. Takes the ball and is Ooh. hit there by number 27, Dave Evans. Also the initial hit made by number 59, Mark Burns, and number 30, Sean Jamin. Oh, Evans, Evans gave him a good shot there. That's, uh, he had Wislowski thinking a little bit with that, with that hit there. That was a good, solid hit. First down and 10 Indians, the ball on the 40 yard line. 10.32 left in this ball game. Stamets from under center, pitches back to Weslowski. Out around the right side. Good speed for about a five yard gain. Initial hit made by Burns and then finished off by number 22, Brett Veach. Second down and four for the Indians. And the, the Indian offense even, even now seems to be more potent than it certainly was in the right. entire first half. They're now gaining five and six yards on that first down play, and that makes a big difference in your offensive strategy. Stamets, hands off to number 22, the ball carrier. Chad Varney. Hit in there by Costello also. Uh, a, a big red, the tornado's down, I think. That's it's Joe cast Costello, man. right. The cast man's down on the field down there. Not a, not a good thing when you see that from any player. With Cast Man, you can't tell if he's in pain or just mad. I'm not sure which it is down there with him. Well, while we have a little time here, guys, the Mount Carmel area boosters are selling their sweatshirts and t shirts and all their good stuff that they've bought. And it, as soon as you walk in the uh, main gate of the Silver Bowl. They have everything on sale in the spirit booth there. So whenever you get time and you're down at the game, stop in and, and pick up something and support these guys. Well, they certainly go out, go all out. I mean, you, if you see the kind of money they spend throughout a year on different things, you, it's amazing they're able to raise that kind of thing year to year. Well, summer camps, they, they, you know, how many summer camps did the yeah. boys go away this summer? Uh, at least three or four equipment. And I guess another thing, we, Joe Costello now up on his feet and they're assisting him off the field. Notice before he left though, he had a, a little word of advice for the defense before he came off. And he's limping, but he's moving under his own power and that's a good sign. In at linebacker for Joe Costello, number 69, John Yastashak will take his place. Indians with a third down and four. 9-19 left in the ball game. 21-12, Big Red in the lead. Oh, mm. that one's going to be a legal procedure against the Indians. Everybody move but the center. And the call, a dead ball foul. Legal procedure against the Indians. Tough penalty to take when you're when when you're moving like that. that that's got to hurt you a little bit. That brings up a, a third and nine now, and instead of a third and four, and that's that's a tougher play to make, and it, it could kill a could kill a drive here. Twins split out left for the Indians. Stamets from the shotgun formation. Looks over the middle and completes the pass to number 22, Chad Varney. 
hit by number 59, Mark Burns. <laughs> That's why the Burns man is the burn man. <laughs> he went down like he was definitely going to be hurt. He got up, his replacement was coming in, and he almost hit him to get him back <laughs> off the field. So the burn man is truly an individual when it yes, comes to playing is. football out there. Officials timeout. And I'm not sure what for. No. <laughs> These. Eight minutes and 31 seconds left in the ball game. Stamets with a first down from Mount Carmel Arias, 45. Pitches back to Weslowski, a slide move by Weslowski. Find some running room and knocked out of bounds by is. Dave Evans after about a 15-yard run, but what a great move by Weslowski. That's the Weslowski that played last year against Mount Carmel down at the Kemp Memorial Stadium down in Shemokka. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he just made two side steps and, and away he went, picked up the first down and extra yardage. Big Red definitely rocked back on its heels now, ladies and gentlemen, as we, as we proceed to the fourth quarter. This game gets tighter and tighter and tighter. The Indians are, are moving the ball now almost at, at will. Uh, not, <laughs> not typical of this team. Especially when you saw the first half of this game, and you would have wondered what there's two different teams playing here. Shemokin area came out of here, and they're a whole different team, both offensively and defensively. And you got to give Coach Chicatano, you know, the big kudos for that one. Whatever he talked to them about at halftime right. certainly panned out now. First down and 10 Indians. The ball's on the 30-yard line. Pitch back to Weslowski, going to bring it around the left side. Finds a block, cuts it up the middle, and tackled by Sean Sheptock, but after about a seven-yard gain. And again, spreading the defense out. That's what, that's what his intent is right now. Spread them out and make the move. Castman back in the lineup now at the, at the uh, lineback position. He slipped back in the game. We weren't looking there. Well, he has a taped up ankle. So yeah, he's taped his ankle yep. up now. He's ready to go. Stamets tries a quick hand off to Weslowski. Hit in there initially by 63, Scott Grady. Yeah, Grady made the play there. Third down and about three yards to go. Seven minutes, 20 seconds left in the ball game. 21 to 12, Mount Carmel area in the lead. Try the quick handoff up the middle to 22, Chad Varney. That'll be close to a first down. That offensive line you, from Shemokin area, you think they put a whole different crew in there the That's way they're right. playing in the second half. Yep. First down and 10, Indians from the 16-yard line. Got to give them all the credit, boy. They The line search now is exactly the opposite of what we talked about in the first half. They're making the plays. Stamets pitches back to Weslowski, taking it out around the right side. Good tackle made by 21, Joe Wargo. Oh, Wargo was fantastic. Fought the block off all the yes, way, and boom. I'll tell you what, when you look at Wislowski standing up here, looking the way we're looking from behind. Yeah. Well, Wislowski had so much room, in fact, it probably would have been a touchdown. Now that brings up a second down and 14 for the Indians. A four yard loss on that play. Stamets from the shotgun formation. Intercepted. Intercepted by Joel Gonzalez. Gonzo. Boy, what a great interception. Free safety, read it all the way and made the play. I'm gonna tell you what. Chad Ritchie, or not Chad Ritchie, yeah. but. But back up here on the offensive line this time and Grady is over there and I'm gonna tell you what, Scott Grady is completely right. He, this is the second consecutive play. He has been outright dragged to the ground and put on the ground by, by someone from the Shemokin area. And he's telling the ref, that he's being held and the ref's not calling it. But he was he was outright Tackled. drugged really? and put on the ground. And, and that's 
you know, you got to start calling those plays too. This, you know, they, they could turn a game. He's, Great. He griped about it once, and then he griped about it the second time. Great interception that time by Joel Gonzalo. Beach goes in motion, and we have flags on the play. And again, we saw that saw that last week against Marion, Bob. If you remember, Joel sitting back until the right. last minute and then cutting in to make the, the interception. That was a red tornado lined up offside that time. 5.58 left in the ball game. What an exciting ball game here from the Silver Bowl. Well, Shemokin really, really came out in that second half, and they're a different team. You've got to give them all the credit. Both offensively and yeah, defensively. They, they're both sides. really, really playing inspired football out there right now. Higgins. Quick drop, pitches to Veach. Tries cutting it back. A big hit from the Indians there, number. 79 in on the tackle, which is Todd Kurtz. Now, I, I think it is imperative for Big Red to at least pick up a couple of first downs here before they have to punt out of their own end zone. It's going to be extremely difficult to hold these guys back. You got five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the game, and, and we so far have done nothing offensively in, this, in the second half here. Higgins. Rolls, gets it off to Gonzalo. No. Gain of about five yards, fumble on the play. Picked up by Brad Ritchie, takes it around the right side. He'll score. Touchdown, Indians. Big hit there on the Indians' part. Is that? I think Gonzalo is still, yeah. Gonzalo is still down. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's amazing. Unbelievable. Well, Shemokin area will probably go for two here, guys. The score 21 yeah, to 18 Stamets, right Stamets now. is in the ball game still, so. I'm trying to make this a 21-20 ball game. Again, there's over five minutes left, and, and this is not bode well for Big Red. They, no. they have fallen apart here in the second half, Mo and much of it has to do with, with Shemokin area's play. It really has. Big Red's really been rocked. Gonzalo's up. It's a good sign. The big guy's up. He's walking off kind of gingerly, but he's walking off without any help, so that's a good sign. Now, in Gonzalo's part, it's interesting to see whether that pass reception was 10 yards or not. I'm, I'm, it, it was right at the 10-yard mark, and I don't know where, you know, Jose will right. have to give us the exact amount of yards, but that may or may not have put him over the over the, uh, right. the reception mark, but I, I'm i sorry I couldn't tell you that right now. It was so close to where he caught the ball at. Stamets from the shotgun formation. Snaps back. Stamets looking into the corner of the end zone. Big rush on. And Stoss pulling over and Corey Hepler finish him off. Big play that time by Big Red. With five minutes and seven seconds left in the ball game, Mount Carmel area 21, Shemokin area 18. No well, balls in Big Red's court now, That's guys. Right. That's it. I mean, they're going to kick off. You don't, you don't put some offense on the field, you can lose the game. It's as simple as that. I mean, all the marbles are up on this next offensive series. Plus the fact you got to handle the ball here. No matter whatever they're going to do, you got to handle the ball. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to give, uh, you have to give Richie heads up play on that one, picking up the uh, the fumble and and taking it in like he did. I don't know if it's if it's too early yet for this, but I, I think Shemokin has to think about an onside kick. Oh, I'm guessing they're gonna, oh, do, they're gonna do something here. No, they didn't. Kicks in the direction of number 27, Dave Evans. Nice move by oh. Evans, takes it up the sideline to about the 50 yard line and a great move by Dave Evans. Two Indians zeroed right in on him, and he just did a little sidestep. He's done a heck of a job on return yes, he tonight. Has. He really has. I, you're right. He's still handling every one of them, so 
He's, he's doing a heck of a job. This is yeah. it. It's crunch time. Gonzalez right. back in the, in the offense for, for Mount Carmel area, so he's not out of the game. But it's crunch time, ladies and gentlemen. This is where it all counts now. You've Four got minutes. to put the ball up the field. Sorry, Bob. No, that's okay. Four <laughs> minutes and 50 seconds left in the ball game. I'm getting excited now at the end of the game here. Higgins pitches to Veach out around the left side and goes nowhere. Nice tackle made by number 15 in there. Looks like Brad Ritchie. And as you said, Warren, they're saying run the ball. There it is. I mean, you've got to put put some first downs down here or right. you're putting one heck of a lot of pressure on that defense. And, and they've been on the field the whole second half. You know, second down and 10. 4-12 left in the ball game. Higgins pitches back to Veach. Going to throw the ball. Eric Higgins out there. Great play. Great pass. Great reception. Law Good firm. call. Good law call. Firm. That's the law firm there, guys. Higgins well, to Higgins. Was, no, no, that, that, was, was, that was Veach to Higgins. Veach to Higgins. I'm sorry. Yeah, Brett threw the pass. He's an associate <laughs> in the firm. <laughs> Veach is an associate. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes on the 36-yard line. His name on the letterhead, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that gives them a little bit of breathing room right at this point. Oh, they needed this. They needed this big time. 347 left in the ball game. Higgins pitches back to Veach, finds a little hole, gain of about five yards, and runs some time off the clock at 3.38. Rob Taylor in on that tackle? Yep. Number 74. Was it? That was, that was a very big play, guys. Very big play there. Higgins with single coverage on Gonzalo again. Up the middle of Joe Wargo, down to about the 30-yard line. So Mount Carmel will be faced with a third down and about four. Play's gonna go in with uh, Eric Higgins. He was wandering around there and they called him over and gave him the play to get back in the huddle. Big, big first down coming, a big play, third and four. Two minutes and 40 seconds remain in the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Big red fans up on their feet along with the Shemokin area fans. Higgins, oh, great play made by number 26 there from the Indians, which was Brian Weichel. Got both hands up in on the block. So Mount Carmel now with a fourth down and four, 2.30 left on the clock. And a question now, what are they gonna do? Do we punt? Do we go for it down here? Timeout called by the Red Tornadoes. Ball's well, on what, the 30 yard the line, so you're 30. not gonna punt, I no, guess. No, you know, I, if, you, I, if you punt it into the end zone, it comes back yeah, to the 20 anyway. you're gonna so. maybe aim it out of bounds there. They'll go for it on the 30, I'm sure now, with Coach Williams in the huddle. Again, there's two minutes and 30 seconds remain. Three point ball game. This is a critical first down, and you're gonna tell that defense, here's uh, two and a half minutes, you're right. gonna have to do your best. I don't I don't think Big Red uh, considered themselves to be in such a tough game, and. Uh, that's what happens when you play the backyard rivalry. Well, that's, that's true. Yeah. This, this game, you throw the records out, you throw yeah, everything out. You can say out. it 100 times, right. but this is it. it this yep. shows what we've talked about all night, that it's happened when Shimogan was great, it's happened when Mount Carmel's been great. It doesn't matter. It's in the backyard. It's the best Cole Region football you can see. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in the ball game. Fourth down and four for the Red Tornadoes. Timeout called by the Indians. I think they wanted to see what set was coming out there for the Red Tornadoes. Oh, and true. A lot of coaching strategy going on right now. Yeah, we had a pack full of strategy tonight, that's for sure. You want to talk coaching strategy, guys? We're going to say it again to you. Uh, Thursday night, 6.30, Dana Matucci's in the back room there at a supper club. You're going to get more strategy than you ever won in your lifetime. <laughs> I mean, you're going to sit literally next to Coach Williams and, and, and four of his young men and players and, and uh, get to ask him questions about either the game they just played or the upcoming game the following day. He'll, he, he's as candid as he can possibly be. He tells you everything that, that, that you ask him. He's, he's, you know, he loves to answer the questions, and there's no That's question right. too hard for him. And, and just to sit with those young men and share some time with them and a meal with them, 
it's truly a rewarding experience. And, and if, again, if you have anything, any interest in Mount Carmel area football, for five bucks, <laughs> you can't go wrong on a Thursday night at Dana Matucci's at, at 6.30. Fourth down and four for the Red Tornadoes. Higgins puts Veach in motion. Backs looks at Gonzalo on the short out. First down. First down, Red Tornadoes. Gonzo. And there it is. That's it. That's it. There's his dad waving his fist and all. That did it. He did it. He, he's asking for the ball, I believe, now. Or, or timeout, one or the other. They should give him the ball. Officials timeout. No, somebody's down. Somebody's down on the field. That's they, what's Yeah, matter. they should still give him. I mean, that has to be with the less. They are counting it as a pass exception on the fumble, right? right? Yeah, well, it has to be that. He has to have broken the all-time mark, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go out on the limb on this one. But I believe that, that Joel Gonzalo is now Mount Carmel area's all-time yardage receiver. And uh, and uh, he would be eclipsing uh, Frank Niglio. That's right. On, on that mark. And, and I believe that he has to have picked up the yards with that last reception. Number 69, heard on the play, John Yasashak. And John had a groin pull from up at Marion, and he said, I'm playing in this game. So he put out a lot of effort tonight, and, and he is hurt. And, uh, but still, it was amazing that he even played tonight. Mm -hmm. He was the only player uh, banged up going into the game. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes, 2-10 left on the clock. Higgins to Veach, off the left side. Finds a little running room gain of about three yards. And you got two purposes here. Gain another first down, but chew up as much time as you can and get out of this game a winner. And a three, hold on to the ball. And hold on to the ball. This is a dogfight right to the end. The Shemokin area team gave us everything you could ever ask for in a football That's game. That's right. And, and, and at the moment, it could go either way. Are Timeout they? called by the Indians. Two, one minute and 33 seconds left in the ball game. 21 to 18, Mount Carmel area in the lead. Now, Coach Williams had, had talked about it several times and saying that, that the only concern he probably had about this football team, that it was never in a tough game, that it never had its back to the wall. Well, I guess we can send a thank you card over to the Shemokin Indians. <laughs> and certainly they put their backs to the wall, and they're certainly in a tough game now. With the the, uh, the end of this game, the result's still in doubt. <laughs> you know, he's got to be thinking to himself, maybe he didn't want a game like this. But this this does two things, I think. If you look down the line in, in high school football, number one, uh, and Shemokin came in here, something we didn't talk about much. Shemokin came in here with, with a second reason, really. They seem to, 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 to be that if they were to lose this game, they will drop out of district contention. That seems to be right. the thought now. How anybody could think about that now? Already, the I don't know either. The so district screwed right. up with that way they do that. But there was the feeling that they would fall out of contention. But on the other side of the coin, after they play a Mount Carmel area team that's, that's considered one of, the, one of the best in the region, this can only make them a tougher team down, right. the, down, a, down the, the, the road. And, and now, if I were another team on their schedule as the season goes, win or lose tonight, I would not be looking forward to meeting this group because they, they really found themselves tonight. Higgins brings the Tornadoes up to the line. He pitches back to Veach. Finds some running room. And that one will be down close to a first down. Very close. I, he may have it. I'm, they're not showing anything, but he may be. They're going to have a measurement. And again, Warren, go, you know, go back to that. Everybody knew the type of team that Shemokin had. Also, they knew they had a good team. They, they had some... Uh, very experienced people coming in. A lot of playing time from mm -hmm. last year, but the only problem was they're not playing the same positions. They're moved yeah. around a little bit. They knew they had a good team. Unfortunately, the first two games did not end up what they wanted to, you know, to end up, but they still played good. That there, There's the line right there, Wayne, that they did play <laughs> well against two good football teams. Oh, definitely. Teams. You're right. And, and Blue Mountain, not a bad team this year either, and they came back and beat them. So, you know, a lot of the talk about Shemokin not being that good of a team this year around the area that we heard, right. they're, they're a good quality football Well, team. you look at North Schuylkill, first of all. This is North Schuylkill's best team in 15, 20 years that right. they've ever had over there. And and contenders for, for whatever. And, uh, you know. <laughs> for whatever. Yeah, you don't know anymore, You don't do you? know. It used to be the old Eastern Conference. Now it can yeah. be that. It can be, uh, their, what are they, AAA? The AAA, AAA District, yeah, district in their 11. District, yeah. 
Third district 11. Brings up third, it's third down and a foot, guys. The measurement's about a foot for a first down here. We were He was holding his hands up there during the conversation. I, you're looking over at the scoreboard. I thought Phil put a foot up over there <laughs> yeah. on the scoreboard. I was ready to look. One minute and 13 seconds <laughs> left on the clock. Higgins watches it tick down to about 107. Going to take the quarterback first sneak. Down. First and that'll be a first down for the Red Tornadoes. And right now, they can just run it down. Yeah, that's probably the game. I, I wasn't counting the timeouts, but I, I would think Shemokin area is out of timeouts. Right. And that, that's the football game here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, certainly, Mount Carmel area has got to get out of here with a sigh of relief because this was not, I'm sure, what they expected to, out of a Shemokin area team. But at least this year, I mean, they, they I think they felt that they were going to really have a big game tonight, and, and they did. They played a quality team, and, and it looks to me they're going to win it, but they got a wake-up call here is what it comes down right. to, and uh, <laughs> it was quite a call. Officials timeout. Well, that's what they said down Shemokin all week. You know, who did Mount Carmel play? They really didn't play any yeah. quality teams yet. And they did. And uh, we're going to come up and we're going to give them the test with, yeah. with some speed, something that they haven't seen at Shemokin in a number of years. And, yeah. and I'll tell you what, both offensively and defensively, you saw what it did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Higgins takes the ball and downs it at the 26 second mark. And that'll be the last play the Mount Carmel area will have to run. And ladies and gentlemen, the coal bucket's coming home. 1994 champions here in this Shemokin Mount Carmel matchup. Mount Carmel area wins the game 21 to 18, but all the credit in the world to Shemokin coming back in the second half and playing a really good football game. I'll tell you what, uh, there's one thing, look down on the field right now. You haven't seen this in a number of years between these two teams. And now uh, maybe it's the coaching staffs, whatever it might, the whole game long, they were helping each other up. They're down there hugging each other. You know, there's Wislowski and, and, and Veach down there and everything, and that's that's good to see. Great game. This was. This is what makes this backyard rivalry oh, yeah. everything. I'm telling you what, if anybody has any any thought of ever ending this series, <laughs> they should be taken out and flogged because <laughs> I don't care if you're triple A and we're double A or if you're nine A and we're twenty four A. These kind of games should still exist That's in right. high school football. And you know, I'll tell you what, if you look through the whole state, breaking up the division, breaking up the Eastern Conference and everything else, and going into district play and the PIAA and everything. All, you know, that's what that's what happened, these yeah. backyard rivalries. They yeah. were all broken up. Well, this should never end, ladies and gentlemen. Red you Tornado's like now this. getting the coal bucket. Michael Higgins lifts it high above his head. And what you're watching at the center of the field is the celebration of the Red Tornadoes. There it is, four young, long years, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming back. That's right. And a long time in an empty space in that trophy case. Mount Carmel will show 54 wins, 23 losses, and nine ties. And now the Red Tornadoes head over, <laughs> and they get a little bit of uh, firecracker celebration. Well, I, <laughs> they're having that celebration over in that corner there. <laughs> every week, <laughs> every home game. This, this year, right. I don't know. We'll have to, I'm going to have to ask them at Supper Club what it is we, we do that for. What's the significance Well, they go over there. to the bank people. Yeah, but I mean, I, we never did that. I never saw that <laughs> done before. I have to figure out who started that tradition. It seems to be a new one growing here. Cole Buck and the cheerleaders over there. Red Tornadoes now coming off the field. Big win, 21 to 18, Mount Carmel area. And now they go over to the bleacher creatures and they're gonna <laughs> they're hitting every side, hit every side they, they can. And that, that's a nice thing to see. That's right, that's, I'll tell you what, when you're in a tight game, you're down at that end zone down there. Those people down there are big time uh, fans. You, the noise and, and, and the, the distraction they do with another team is, is really a, a, 
a big thing for the team and, and to hear them cheering you on down there. And not you know, not only that, some of those people have been down there for years. Oh yeah. For yeah. years. They've been down in that end zone and, and they claim that it's it's the best place to sit because you see all the action. True football <laughs> yeah. enthusiasts will tell you that. And not they even, will. That that you see the line that, opening right. the holes, you see all the plays and and that's true. I mean it's it, if you really want to watch the technical aspect of a football game, the end zone's where you're gonna be. Well that's it. We talk about some really good football. We talk about backyard rivalry. You can't beat it. Mount Carmel, Shemokin. Now, this was everything it was billed to be. Uh, you know, the good thing is we won. <laughs> this makes it even better. <laughs> a hard-fought game. We, we quickly, we're running out of time here. We want to quickly look down the road. Mount Carmel area will now take on a, a strong Montoursville team at Montoursville next week. We know what kind of game that can be. Been traditionally a very tough game for us. So the, the, the march continues on to the, on to the, the district playoffs for us with another tight game next week. And hopefully we, we bring everybody healthy into it. Well, that's it from the Silver Bowl. Mount Carmel area 21, Shemokin area 18. See you next week against Montoursville. I'm Bob Else. I'm Warren Altamore. Wayne Brokenshire. Good night. <laughs>